So Islamically, yes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, Ibrahim alaihi salam, because he had the suhuf, Isa, Jesus, Ibn Maryam, and he, those are all Rusul, and you can call them in that sense Messiahs as well. Okay, so you can call the other sure. prophets Messiahs. Why not? So why aren't they called Messiahs? They are. I mean, what do you mean they're not? So okay, so Muhammad, Noah, and these 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 other prophets—they're called Messiahs. You could call them Messiahs if you like. I mean, what do you, what do you mean they're not called? So nowhere do we find we only find Jesus being identified as the Messiah. Where? In the Quran and the Hadith. In the Quran, in a Hadith, for example, when we talk about them being Rusul, right? This puts them at the same thing as being a Messiah. Right? Really? Yeah. Somebody so, who's so bringing where, a message. Where is okay? So what is the reference for that? Like, sure, is is, I, it, is it in the Quran or a Hadith where you can equate a that a Rasul, like you said, sure, right, to, to a, messiah. a Messiah? No problem. I get you on that. All right. And give me some time. Look up some books. Or yeah, I didn't. <laughs> right. did something. No, no. But you, you just came out here from nowhere, right? Like you didn't ask me to look this up or anything, right? Actually, yeah. So you so, got a question? No problem. Come back next Sunday. We'll bring you some books. Okay. So I asked you, is there anywhere in the Quran or the Hadith yes. where anybody else other than Jesus mm -hmm. is called the Messiah? Yes. You said yes? Yes. What is that? This is from the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. You know what that is? Uh, no, what is that? Uh, it's a book of Hadith. In the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, volume number 6, page number 479, this is the Hadith Sanadan with the Sanad, with the chain that reports about Ta'adir. You know what Ta'adir is? Is the punishments that were handed out. Okay. So here is the entire Sanad. Hadathna Abu Bakr, Hadathna al Waqiya, Al Mubarak, Al Hassan, and Amr. You understand the chain, right? It says, Wa Takhlis Hada al Darb, Wa Ta'adir Hada Bainana, Min Sharia Masaha. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Why is he saying the chain of the hadith with all the names and then not reading the words of the hadith? And going straight to the footnote, pretending it is the hadith. Why is he not reading the hadith? The hadith is up above. Why is he reading the footnote written by the modern editor below it? If they said this is not a part of the hadith, no problem. Hello, my bad, my bad. But this is not a lie, it's not a deception. This one says, May Allah reward you with good, Shaykh Yusuf. But the scholars didn't mention, to my knowledge, that Messiah means the chosen one. Your speech is to be doubted. I have never heard a hadith with more than one Messiah in it. The Messiah is one, Isa the son of Mary, peace be upon him, and Allah spoke directly to Moses, peace be upon him, only. I do not know of what benefit is this conversation, or where it would lead if Isa is the only Messiah or not. I do not understand what the Sheikh is talking about. We Muslims know that the word Messiah is exclusive to Isa, peace be upon him, only. Why does the Sheikh say all messengers are messiahs? Is this an invention to insult the Christian evangelist? I have referred back to the source he pointed to in the Musannaf, and I could not find what he said. Well, it's not surprising this person couldn't find what the Sheikh said, because it's obvious they can read and write in Arabic, so they were probably looking in the body of the text where the hadiths are written, and not in the footnotes where editors write their notes. And we'll see here that the expertise of people commenting in his comment sections are a lot higher than his. Perhaps they should be Sheikh, and they should be in the park instead of him. This one says, Assalamu alaikum, my Sheikh Uthman. I could not find evidence for that talk in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba. Please, who would guide me to the exact place of the evidence? This one says, When I went back to Musannaf Evi Shayba, the sixth volume, page 479, I could not find what Uthman is talking about. What is this nonsense? My brother Uthman, the word you mentioned that was in Musannaf Evi Shayba, al masha it must be revisited. And I think the printed word is correctly pronounced as as samha and it is said as as sharia samha and I could not find the term you mentioned in the hadiths, but in the explanatory comment by the editor, which he mentioned replying to the man-made laws and comparing it to the gentle Islamic sharia. If only that person was the sheikh in the booth, answering questions and objections, he wouldn't have been in the mess that Uthman ibn Fibin is now. This one says, The sheikh specializes in hadith, as he said in previous videos. 
That means he must be very aware of the hadith books and their styles. I'm very surprised by this approach that shows intentional lying and corrupting. Islam was never in need of this kind of defense. What would harm him to say there is no source in the Quran or Sunnah describing prophets as Messiah? Or if he said, I do not know a source that describes prophets as such. I hope the Sheikh corrects his mistake and tells people that what he said about the quote-unquote hadith was actually the author's comment. And let's remember the hadith of the Prophet that says, whoever intentionally lies about me, let him take his chair in hellfire. Wallahi, he will call you out and we will catch you. The narrative has balls, has balls, has balls. That's what I'm going to say. The narrative has balls, has balls. Has balls. That's what I'm gonna say. The narrative has balls. Has balls. Has balls. That's what I'm gonna say. The narrative has balls. Has balls. Has balls. And talking of comments, we did see a few asking us, "Why don't you confront him if you're so confident? Why don't you talk to him face to face?" The Lion of the Dawa. Yes, if you're a fan of this lion of the dawah whose turn has come to respond, please watch carefully. Those of you who look up to that fraud of a sheikh, watch what happened when our brothers went back to confront him. Sheikh of Manza um, and uh, at the masjid, no, he's not coming. Uh, he's not debating anymore. He said. No, he's not coming. Uh, he's not debating anymore. He said. What? Sheikh of Manza not debating anymore. What do you mean? Yeah, no more. Well, we we don't want to debate. We just no want to chat. Talk. No more chat. Oh. So wait, does it, is he not gonna? No. He, he, yeah. He said that Uthman is saying that he won't talk anymore. He's in Etikaf. Like Etikaf is like when you're in the masjid, you have to stay there. Like you have to be in the for a day. So you can't leave. Like it's during the last ten days of Ramadan, you go you go in the masjid and spend the night. So like, well, why would you go today? Today? Yeah. Because it started today. So, so, he, so he won't be here today. Yeah, he's not coming. Yeah, he's not coming. come on. No debating. <laughs> yeah. All right. When is he coming back? I don't like next Sunday. I like think, yeah. so, he'll be here next Sunday. Uh, I sure. mean, obviously, but he's not debating. He's not debating. He's not talking to you guys again. Like, um, he's not gonna like debate or whatever. Like, um, and we have questions about the answer that he gave about that. Okay. Question. Yeah. I have questions about the paper he showed. Uh, he told me to look it up. He told me to bring the book. So here I am. Yeah. So he's gonna show me the book. Yeah. Well, I guess he's not. Did you see that, all you fans and supporters of Sheikh Othman? What happened to the lion? I hate to break it to you, he deceived you. It's all hype. He created an image of a knowledgeable, brave sheikh. On his channel, he's a lion, but on the ground, he was nowhere to be seen. But he emerged online three days later with a response video. While he was still meant to be in the mosque hiding, uh, I mean in Atikev, as pressure mounted on him to respond. His time of seclusion in Atikev should have been for ten days, remember? The last 10 days of Ramadan, which we are still in now. So you can't believe, like, it's during the last 10 days of Ramadan, you go you go in the masjid and spend the night. So did he break his atikaf, his special one-to-one -one time with Allah, just to make a video? Or was there no atikaf to start with, but simply a delay tactic to avoid facing it again while he scrambled in a panic to work out a way to save face when he saw that his lie was exposed? Anyway, let's have a look at the response video. It seems like it's become a full-time job for us to look up the sources after him and find fabrication after fabrication. If they said this is not a part of the hadith, no problem. We can look at the actual printed book and if it's not, khalas, my bad. He's saying if they say it's not part of the hadith. So he still doesn't know if it's part of the hadith or not? He's still not sure? Doesn't he have a master's in hadith? Shouldn't he have checked for sure before making the response video? He can't recognize that a note starting with Dear Reader at the bottom of the page is not a hadith. <laughs> his own lay audience in his comments recognize it. A 10-year-old Arab boy would recognize it's not a hadith. Oh no, but they need to say it's not part of the hadith and we need to go to the printed version. Yeah, big words to cover up such a horrible ignorance. And if it's not, khalas, my bad. Khalas, my bad. Shouldn't he say, may Allah forgive me, I repent? I'm sorry for claiming the Prophet said something he never did, which is a very serious thing, as his own followers said. For a sheikh, I would have expected him to say something like, Astaghfirullah, I beseech forgiveness from Allah. But instead he says, My bad. 
Is this a sheikh? This is not a lie. It's not a deception. I printed it directly, as you can see, from Maktaba Shamil and took it to them. It wasn't a lie or a deception? You sure about that? You forget that we have a picture of your paper. You said you printed it out as it was and brought it to us. No, you didn't. We've seen it, and it looks nothing like a page from a hadith book, even though you have a master's in hadith. I did it from the Islamic University of Islamabad with a master's focused in hadith. Let me tell you how a normal page from a hadith book looks like. You have a body of text with hadiths, and then you have footnotes at the bottom of the page. And usually there's a space between the two sections and a dividing line. Have a look. Here's your footnote that you quoted from different publications. You see hadiths above, footnotes below, and there's a space and dividing line in between, which is nothing like the abomination that you showed us on your paper, where there was no space and no dividing line between the hadiths and the footnote. That paper was not printed out straight from a source. It was interfered with to bring together the wording of the footnote together with the wording of the hadith as if they were one merging them together in an adulterous union that should have never happened. This was done on purpose, Othman. You know it, and so do we. And now on to the new lie that we touched upon earlier. This is the page that he appealed to before he covered it up with his own typed comment, and it actually goes against him, because it shows how Muslim commentators differed on what Messiah means. One, the top line, he said, Al-Masih, the Messiah, as siddiq the righteous. The second opinion said, it means Musiha bil Barakah, which means he was wiped with blessing. The third one from Al-Hasan al-Basri, it agrees, it said, his name is Al-Masih, meaning he was wiped with blessing. The fourth one here on the screen, it disagrees with the ones above and says, Al-Masih means Al-Malik, the king. All of them are describing the Messiah Al-Masih as a singular, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, not meaning all the prophets. And they're all differing on what that title means. Unfortunately for him, Allah didn't know what Messiah meant. Muhammad didn't know what Messiah meant. And for hundreds of years afterwards, scholars and commentators differed on what the Messiah singular word meant. The one that belonged to Jesus Christ. None of them said all the prophets are messiahs. That quote that he got, like we mentioned, was copied and pasted and slightly edited from a modern Muslim website describing what the Jews believed. And he edited the sentence to remove the part that said the Messiah was a Jewish title mentioned in the Torah. But that's not a source. It's just Muslims talking on a website in an article. What is it with him and using modern people's words pretending they're sources? Those are modern Muslims now talking about Jewish beliefs. What are you talking about? Again, shocking, panicked deception. Look here also at the Qurtubi Tafsir of Surah 3 verse 45. Notice that it's not covered up by text that somebody typed and it's not an dodgy word document that somebody printed. This is straight from the website. It says, quote, And the Messiah, son of Mary, is differed upon. It was said, he wiped the earth, meaning he travelled without settling. Ibn Abbas said, He did not wipe a disabled one except he healed him. So he may have been called Messiah due to that. It was said because he was wiped with the ointment of blessing and the prophets used to be wiped with it. And it was said he had smooth soles on his feet. And it was said because beauty wiped him, meaning it manifested in him. And it was said he was called that as he was wiped clean of sin. Notice the word wipe featured a lot here because the word wipe in Arabic, masaha, sounds like the Messiah, Messiah. Those were poor Arabs guessing and trying to approximate the Hebrew word Messiah with the only language they knew, Arabic, because their ignorant false prophet didn't realize that Messiah was a Hebrew word that he put in his Arabic Quran without knowing what it means. And his ignorant alter ego Allah couldn't tell him or tell the Muslims. And so they have been guessing ever since. Muslims listening, if you want to know what the word Messiah means, come to the Bible. It is a Hebrew word. It is not Arabic. We again challenge Uthman ibn Fibin to show us in any credible book where it says all prophets are messiahs in Islam. It doesn't say that. Show us in a source that hasn't been made up or tampered with or doctored or had the page covered up by text that you type. Show us a source from Islam where it says all prophets are messiahs or show us the plural of messiah, al musahay the word, in any reference. You can't because it doesn't exist. The one that you got was a typo in a footnote. Try again. Try again without deception this time. Can you do that? As for sincere Muslims who would like to know what Messiah really means, Messiah means saviour. 
the Jewish people were looking for God to send a Messiah, an anointed one, a chosen one. In John 4, Jesus himself claimed to be the promised Messiah. When he spoke to the Samaritan woman, she said, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And also in this passage, Isaiah 53, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and was pierced for our sins, and all our sins were laid on him, and by that we are healed and given peace with God. That is the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Muslims, come to Jesus of Nazareth. He is the one and only Christ, Messiah, Saviour. Can see.